Last offseason was mostly quiet when it came to player movement. Other than a few stars being traded, there weren't many game-changing transactions being made. However, there were a few deals that caught the attention of the basketball world for the wrong reasons, and most of them came from Detroit. With Troy Weaver making his debut as GM, the Pistons decided to aggressively retool their roster with the hope of building for the future. And while their draft selections were in line with their goals, their free agent signings caused confusion and frustration in their fan base, especially the one involving Jeremy Grant. But after 20 games, it turns out Weaver was right. Most of the new additions have been playing well, and despite all the criticism, the gamble on Grant has proven to be a huge success. So far, the versatile forward has had a smooth transition from role player to first option, and his production has been at an all-star level. But how is it that he became an overnight star? And now that he's playing this well, should the Pistons consider building around him? Let's talk about it. Until last season, Grant was the kind of player who probably wouldn't be recognized by casual fans. He was a solid role player that was a key part of Denver's run to the conference finals. And the year before, he was a full-time starter in Oklahoma City. But he had never been the main attraction for a team. His career started in 2014 as a second-round pick who was selected by the rebuilding 76ers. And while that was an awful year for fans in Philly, the team's lack of talent allowed him to play enough minutes to show what he was capable of doing. But after a couple of seasons, the team determined he wasn't going to be part of their future and decided to trade him to the Thunder, where he would play for the next three years. During his first two seasons in OKC, his role was mostly the same. He averaged around 20 minutes per game and wasn't required to do too much. However, things would start to change in his third season. Coach Billy Donovan decided to make him part of the starting lineup, and he saw an increased role as a result. His defensive play became a key element of his team's schemes, and his ability to open the floor earned him more shots. But despite his improved play, OKC decided to trade him away as part of their first attempt to retool their roster. Now in Denver, Grant's role was reduced. Given that he was part of a team with two stars and depth at the wing position, his minutes were cut and he was limited to shooting from the corner. From time to time, he would put together great scoring performances, but since he was rarely allowed to make many shots, his biggest impact came on the other end of the floor as he usually had to guard players like Paul George and LeBron James. In the end, his play helped the Nuggets overcome two large deficits in the postseason and make it to the conference finals. However, despite the success he enjoyed from a team standpoint, he wanted to be more than a role player, and free agency was the perfect time to look for a change. So when Detroit called, he didn't think twice about accepting their offer. The move shocked the basketball world for two reasons. First, no one believed Grant would leave the Nuggets, and much less for a team like the Pistons. After all, Denver provided him with the opportunity to compete for a championship. That's something few other teams could match, and Detroit was not one of them. But on top of that, Weaver and his team offered Grant a $60 million contract, something most people believed was an exaggeration. Still, Jeremy's decision probably wouldn't have been so surprising if it was based on money. However, the Nuggets decided to match the offer, meaning the small forward could have made the same money by staying with his former team. But he chose to go to Detroit, not for the money, but because he wanted a larger role. Regardless of what the people thought about him, Grant decided to bet on himself, and the fact he found a team willing to give him a chance was a win for him. But the move drew criticism for the Pistons. They had just allowed the young and promising Christian Wood to walk away and replaced him with someone who seemingly had a much lower ceiling. To make things worse, they acquired a lot of players that made a questionable fit, to say the least. So with a flawed roster in place and the idea of focusing on the development of players like Killian Hayes, there weren't many reasons to be excited about the Pistons as the season got closer. But little did we know, Grant would be about to put on a show. His first game in a Pistons uniform was a disappointing one. He finished with 9 points on 36% shooting and, for a moment, it looked like he wasn't ready to become a team's first option. But it wouldn't take long for him to make things right. Grant scored 28 points in his next game and started a stretch of 14 straight games in which he finished with at least 21 points. His hot start allowed him to break a franchise record for most points scored throughout the first 10 games with the team, but that was only the tip of the iceberg. The small forward has nearly doubled the number of shots he took from the field in three-point range the season before. As a result, he's more than doubled his scoring average and has become the undisputed offensive leader for a Pistons team that is still looking for its identity. With the added responsibility, it would be easy to assume his efficiency has taken a step back, but that couldn't be further from the truth. During his time as a role player, Jeremy was an efficient shooter on all three levels. However, he wasn't a volume scorer, and as we all know, there are players whose efficiency goes down when they start taking more shots. But that hasn't been his case. Somehow, his field goal percentage has remained close to where it was at the end of last season, and his percentages from long range and the charity stripe have actually increased. That seems hard to believe, especially considering most of his shots are no longer coming from the corner. In fact, he's now driving to the hoop and pulling up from behind the line more often than ever. Yet his shots keep falling at a high rate. That's already good enough to put him in the conversation for most improved player. However, scoring is not the only thing he's been doing at a high level. Despite the additional load on the offensive end, Grant remains as effective as ever on the other end of the court. He's usually assigned the toughest assignment on the opposing team, and not only he accepts it with pride, but he also makes an excellent job at bothering rival stars. 
on top of that, he's also taken a step forward as a playmaker. His average of 2.9 assists per game is by far the highest of his career. And even though that number doesn't mean he's become an elite passer, he's already shown the ability to make the right play when it matters the most. For instance, instead of taking the final shot in a close game against Phoenix, he decided to make a pass after drawing the attention of the defenders that were close to the hoop. That allowed one of his teammates to make the basket that would send the game to overtime. And once the additional period got going, Graham made sure to get the win for his team. In other words, despite not being at the level of Nikola Jokic, Jeremy is capable of making the right reads and reacting accordingly. That's an invaluable asset for a player that should start seeing more defensive pressure as the season goes on. And if the team eventually decides to get him more help, there's a chance that number keeps getting better. However, it's not clear whether the team will actually try to get him some help. In fact, now that he's emerged as an all-star candidate, there's no telling exactly what the Pistons' plan will be going forward. The idea of having a star on the team seems to conflict with the plan to develop the young players. After all, young prospects need the ball in their hands to get better. But that may be difficult when someone is taking almost 20 shots per game and drawing all of the attention on the offensive end. But even though it may be hard to do, other teams have proved it's not impossible. Just a few years ago, the Celtics had Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown playing behind Kyrie Irving. And while that didn't finish the way we expected, it didn't harm the development of the young duo. The Spurs have also been doing that for the last couple of decades. It all started with Tim Duncan and David Robinson, and now DeMar DeRozan is leading the way as the young players slowly figure things out. But that's not the only thing the front office can do. If they believe Grant's play could affect their plans for the future, they could also try to trade him in exchange for assets that allow them to build a deeper core. Of course, that would leave them without their best defensive player, while also setting a bad example for any future free agent that may be interested in coming to Detroit. But if the plan is to go into a full rebuild, it won't hurt them to keep losing games. Still, parting ways with Grant could be a terrible idea. 3 and D players are some of the most valuable assets in today's league. And the words of Steve Kerr, they're the kind of players who you wish to build a team around. But getting one of them is not easy, even more so if we talk about someone who can score over 20 points per game. If the Pistons send Jeremy away, they may not be able to replace him in a while. So as hard as it may be, they should try to find a balance between being competitive and focusing on the future. They don't have to prove anything this season. In fact, they should benefit from finishing near the bottom of the standings. But once the season is over, they should start thinking about a way to get the most out of Jeremy while also allowing the young guys to learn the game. All in all, Detroit is in a position no one expected them to be, and it's all thanks to the emergence of Jeremy Grant. He's the latest example of why betting on yourself can make a difference in the league. And if he keeps playing great basketball, he could receive a few awards at the end of the season. And regardless of what the Pistons decide to do about their future, we can be sure about something. Grant will no longer be looked at as a role player. He has the talent to become a star, and perhaps it's only a matter of time until he officially becomes one. But now, do you believe he'll be able to keep playing at this level? Or will opposing teams find a way to slow him down as the season progresses? Let us know in the comments. We hope you've enjoyed today's video, and if you did, remember to like it and subscribe to our channel for more NBA content. We are Courtside.